Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to Uncivil Law. Happy to have you here as always. And we are here with a small drop of tea in the ever ongoing and never ending dispute between Toddy and Without a Crystal Ball. This is relating to the status conference that was held on the 2nd. The judge has put in a formal order that is along the lines that we described earlier when we covered the hearing. So for those of you who are here when we covered the hearing, this language should sound very familiar, but this is the formal version of it that's put on the record so that we all know exactly what's talking about. So I thought I would read the order and I'd explain a couple things that are in it. So we'll just do that. It's not going to take a whole lot of time. The actual order is in the description of this, in this uh, video. So if you want the actual text of the entire order, it's not very long. So I just put it in the description below so you can read along if you want to. But anyways, here's what the order actually says. And this is this was entered on the third in relation to the hearing that was held on the second. So the, the court writes, the court held a hearing on defendant's motion for a status conference. That was ostensibly what the motion was for to decide whether or not we should have a status conference. After hearing argument of counsel regarding allegations of abusive and inappropriate use of social media made by both sides against the other, the court declined to issue a restraining order limiting counsel or the party's use of social media. So no gag order against either the attorneys or the parties. The judge said that she doesn't like to issue gag orders. She says that she doesn't issue gag orders typically, and she finds them to be a matter of insult against the attorneys because the attorneys should be able to control themselves and for that matter be able to control their clients better so basically that she expects more without without formal court intervention so she's she's not mad she's just disappointed uh to quote quote perhaps your mother on this one and then the court continues however however the court reminds the attorneys in this manner matter that they will be held to all rules of professional conduct and that's the part where, like, me as an attorney, my ears perk up, perk up, perk, perk up. It's like, say what now? Because the court, the court is saying, oh, there are ethics rules. And this is, the, this is the point, perhaps more than any other, where if I wasn't paying attention, you got my attention right up. It's like, oh, it's like, whatever. And then it's like, and the court wants you to buy by the ethics rules. It's like, what? What? Yeah, that's, that's, you've got my attention. I, I am firmly snapped to attention, man. You, you mention ethics rules and you're the court. I'm like, I'm laser focused. Yeah, that's, so you are, you are subject to the ethics rules. And when a court says you're subject to the ethics rules, that strongly implies you may not be fully complying with the ethics rules, right? So the statement is you're required to abide by, by the ethics rules. The, the, the undertext is you may not be doing that. Just a, just a reminder. And then relevant to this dispute in particular, the Washington Model Rule 3.6 provides that a lawyer who's participating or has participated in an investigation or litigation of a matter shall not make an extrajudicial statement that the lawyer knows or reasonably should know, will be disseminated by means of public communication, and will have substantial likelihood of materially prejudicing an adjudicative proceeding in the matter. Counsel is cautioned that abuses of social media outlets that test the limits of this rule will not be countenanced. Yeah, that that that's like that's like that's the kind of uh, language that gets my attention. That's that's very diplomatic language. So I'll just read that one again. Caution counsel is cautioned that abuses of social media outlets that test the limits of this rule will not be countenanced. That's that's very, very diplomatic language. Let's me, let me translate that from diplomatic to uh, to normal. Uh, if if you test me, you're gonna you're gonna feel it. If you test me, I will slap you into next week. That that would be the less diplomatic version of this. I will destroy you. But of course, the judge writes it in more formal language. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of legal terms that the judge wrote when they were writing about the ethics rules. And so what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd go back to the actual ethics rule as it's literally written because the judge writes about it and summarizes it. And it's extremely similar. But I thought rather than go because the judge says, here's the rule. So I thought rather than read what the judge wrote, I'll just read what the, the actual ethics rule is in Washington. So the languages will sound very, very close, almost identical. 
And I thought what we could do is we could go through the ethics rule and what it does or does not say. So yes, lawyers do have ethics rules. There are there are ethics rules and lawyers do obey, have to obey them. And when they don't, you, you get you get slapped around as uh, Lynn Wood and Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani are learning as we speak, for example. But here's the actual ethics rule. This is rule 3.6. And I'm reading Washington's version of this. And I make a point of that because this is also rule 3.6 in the model rules. And I don't know if this is exactly word identical to the model rules or not, nor do I particularly care right now, but just making a point for the lawyers playing along at home that I'm reading Washington's version of it, not the model rules version of it, in case there's a difference. So for the non-lawyers, don't worry about it. But for the lawyers, that's uh, just a slight note there. Okay, so here is the rule, 3.6, and the ethics rules. And here's what it says. And I'm going to break this one down a little bit and tell you some of the, the words that are used here because they may not be completely familiar. So a lawyer, you know, that's, uh, you know what a lawyer is. That's someone who's formally admitted to practice before the court, someone who has a license to practice before the court, who is participating or has participated in the investigation or litigation of a matter. So that would be either way. Like, so that's, you, you may, you may be the trial, you may be the counsel that's there, or you may have participated in some capacity without being involved in the litigation. So you might have worked behind the scenes, you might have helped with prep, you might have helped in some other way, but you're not actually doing the litigation. So either way, basically, if you touch this and you're an attorney, this applies to you. And then it says, shall not, which is, yeah, don't do this, make, it shall not do what? Make an extrajudicial statement. So that would be a statement outside of the judicial process. So that means not in a court filing, not in a not in a legal document, but one that's extrajudicial, right? So one that's outside that process. That a lawyer knows or reasonably should know will be disseminated by means of public communication. So you can talk about the case outside of the courtroom, even with people in general, if you want. The rule only prohibits where there is means of public communication. So we're thinking about YouTube, broadcast, radio, making statements to the press, right? So if you wanna talk about it to a classroom of people or you wanna talk about it in a coffee shop or something, then that's fine. You can talk about it. You just have to be careful when these things are being broadcast and mass people are hearing about it, right? So that's what we're concerned about. And so there's another factor to it will have a substantial likelihood, so it has to have a, not just a probability, but a substantial probability of prejudicing, which is biasing or otherwise tainting, the adjudicative process. That's where you're adjudicating, you're judging things, you're deciding something, you're, 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 you're prejudicing or altering or tainting in some way the, the, the legal process of the court in the matter. So basically a lawyer has to be cautious that any statements that they're making that will be broadcasted in a public communication medium, such as radio or YouTube or Instagram or anything that's going to be heard en masse, will not work to undermine the legal process in any way. And so the judge is basically saying, yeah, your statements on Twitter are working to undermine the legal process. That's also incidentally why the judge went more after Saltz than Brown, because whatever Brown has been doing, it's not been on social media. Saltz has been on social media. So Brown has been within the context of the league. So he's not within the back. He's not violating rule point three, three point six, because all of his proceedings are within the judicial process, right? He's making them in court documents where salts maybe a little bit less. So, so that's why salts got a little bit more of this chatter because of this. And then there are a couple exceptions to the rule that apply as well. So notwithstanding the rule, a lawyer can state the following things, the claim offense, and or defense involved and except we're prohibited by law, the identity of the people. So you can say, here's what the case is about. Here are the people that are involved. And here is either what my, here's what my strategy is basically. Information contained in the public record. So you can discuss anything that would be example in a legal filing or otherwise available to the public. So if you got it from a FOIA document or you got it from anywhere that you can discuss it if it's in the if it's in a public record so it's an official government record of some kind so legal filing or like some sort of official governmental record that an investigation the matters in progress so you can say that we're looking into the issue 
the scheduling or result of any step of litigation. So you can say, here's what's upcoming in the litigation, or here's what has happened in the litigation so far. A request for assistance in obtaining evidence and information necessary there too, which is where Saltz is trying to squeeze what he's doing into. So Saltz is looking to B5 because Saltz is trying to use Twitter ostensibly to find information, five witnesses. So this is where Saltz is trying to squeeze into is B5. A request for assistance in obtaining evidence and information necessary there too. So there's a legitimate aspect to that and an illegitimate aspect to that, right? So the judge is saying, you are testing the boundary of the illegitimate aspect of this. So you can look for witnesses, you can look for information, you just have to be careful when you're doing things not to make statements that are casting aspersions on the op opposite counsel or the opposing party. So the judge was talking about, for example, when Saltz made that screenshot that said that there was a, a, a recovery attempt from an email address without the crystal ball, right? That someone was trying to add without a crystal ball's email address as a recovery address, right? And he wrote this this Twitter post about saying, um, you know, that there this is coming and this is coming from a familiar address. Brown's argument was that was insinuation against Brown or against Katie or against someone on her side, right? Because although Saltz's Twitter post didn't say it explicitly, what Brown was saying was, if you read this in context, a person would understand that you're making a uh, insinuation, right? So it's the, again, it's the difference between the text and the subtext. You know, the text doesn't make the accusation, but the subtext does. That was Brown's argument. I didn't thought, I didn't personally find that as much. The judge disagrees with me. Or the judge, it's not exactly the judge disagrees with me, I guess, because the judge didn't say it broke the rule. The judge is saying more it's testing the rule. And I didn't really think it was as much a test. So the judge, like on a scale of one to 10 of where we are, I might have thought that it was a three and the judge might be thinking it's a six. We're a five. So maybe maybe we're closer than, than, I, it, than it seems because she thinks it's testing more than I do. That much is clear. So she thinks it's more extreme. You know, where we are on the continuum is a little bit unclear, but she's she thinks it's more extreme than I did. And, you know, that's... That's a reasonable opinion. The judge isn't wrong for thinking that. It's just a difference of opinion of where we are in that continuum. It's within the metric of a, a reasonable disagreement. And the judge thinks a little less that you're doing a request for assistance in obtaining of evidence and information and a little bit more casting aspersions or casting insinuations or making implications against Saltz or against Brown. And again, that you're doing it in a way that's outside the judicial process. So Brown for whatever else he might be doing that might violate any other rule. So I'm not even suggesting he's not violating some other rule. Maybe he is, but he's not violating rule 3.6 because it's not being made out of court. And so that's exactly why Saltz is getting whacked over the head. And the judge is pointing this out. It's like, you got to, you can, you can hunt for witnesses. You can say, does anyone have any information? Does anyone know anything about this? But you got to be careful in these tweets and stuff that are making aspersions that are that are that are suggesting particular people are behind things when you don't really know that. So that's what the judge is writing about there. And then continuing on with the rest of the ethics rule, picking up in par, par, picking up in 3.6 B6, a warning of danger concerning the behavior of persons involved when there's reason to believe there exists a likelihood of substantial harm. So here we're thinking about warning because uh someone's going to be hurt like in a really physical way. We're concerned about threats of violence. So you can make statements that concern like threats of violence to protect people from harm. That's also within uh, rule 1.6 of the ethics rules dealing with uh, breaches of privilege for that reason as well. And then, uh, and then in paragraph seven, it talks about some additional things in criminal context specifically. And then uh, paragraph C, it says, uh, despite paragraph A, a lawyer may make a statement that a reasonable lawyer would believe is required to protect a client from a substantial undue prejudicial effect of recent publicity, which Brown hasn't really done either. So Brown hasn't made any, Katie has made statements, but again, these are ethics rules for the attorneys. These are ethics rules for the attorneys, not for the clients, right? So whatever Katie has been doing in terms of her live streams or anything else, right? And her out of, her out of court stuff, Brown hasn't been using social media. And so that's what's going on there, right? So uh, Brown could presumably go to social media under 3.6C, 
to help rebut the stuff, but he's chosen not to do that. Instead, he's chosen to go within the court process. And we can critique Brown for the um, nature of how he's doing that and how he's doing it and the, and the precipice. And why are you including 320 pages of screenshots of Twitter? Do I really need all this in my life? No. So there's, it's not, again, not to say that Brown is perfect or that there's other problems that we can't criticize Brown for, right? So I'm not saying that Brown is perfect. I'm saying he's not in violation of rule 3.6. So it's the very it's a very specific claim, right? And so then a statement that you make on this paragraph shall be limited to information as necessary to mitigate, which doesn't cover Brown, and it doesn't also really cover Salts because Salts isn't attempting to rebut anything that is being made outside the record. So Salts can't use the protection of three point six C. So that's basically what the what the uh, the judge is writing about. So this is a this is a question of a continuum, and where exactly we are on the continuum, and the judge just thinks we're a little bit further along in the continuum. So hopefully all that makes sense, and all, hopefully it also makes it also make hopefully it also makes sense why Saltz was getting a a more a slightly, and it was a very slight in my opinion. It was a very slight in my opinion um, tilt. Uh, towards talking to Salt specifically, like the the overall thrust of the proceeding was very very by uh, very very fair, and it was very even to both sides. And there was this one statement, there was this one statement that was directed at Salt, dealing with the declaration of uh from not uh, from Nate, not from uh the UK, and dealing with her statement that the judge seemed particularly displeased with. So there was this one specific comment. The judge made but again that's dealing with the legal proceedings but in the order she's talking about things that are outside the courtroom and so hopefully that makes sense why the judge was directing a little bit more ire specifically at salts and and in in this this ethics rule so again this is the judge just making this little note here of basically be careful going forward that you know that you don't that you don't trip up on this so hopefully all that you know really makes sense and, the, and then, you know, just finishing up with the line that any more abuses of this that test these limits, you know, might receive some additional uh, stronger words. So. So hopefully that's cleared up. Now we know from. Now, I wanted to say two other things before I. Uh, I want to say two other things before I uh, took some questions. Uh, first of all, we still don't know about personal jurisdiction with respect to, to Katie Joy Paulson. We don't know the answer to that. Um, and I, I clarified this also when I was discussing the uh, live stream, when I was doing it in real time, discussing the court hearing. The reason that the court can give orders to the attorneys has basically nothing to do with either Toddy or Katie, right? So I don't know whether or not the judge has jurisdiction over Katie. And you might say, well, how can the judge give orders if they don't have jurisdiction, right? How can the judge give orders if they don't have jurisdiction? And I said, well, we don't know if they have jurisdiction over Katie. I do know they have jurisdiction over the attorneys for damn sure, right? The attorneys are officers before the court. The attorneys are admitted to practice before this court. Whether that's pro hoc vice or otherwise, they are admitted to practice before the court. So do, does the court have jurisdiction over Katie? Not sure. Does the jurisdiction have, uh, does the court have jurisdiction over the attorneys? Hell to the yes, they do. Hell to the yes without blinking an eye. So if you're wondering, well, how can the court give orders if they don't have jurisdiction? They may not have jurisdiction over the case. The court might not have jurisdiction over the case but they for sure as hell have jurisdiction over the attorneys. So that would be why they can give orders to the attorneys. They have jurisdiction over them. So the judge can whack them around all day long, no problem. So that's that's one thing just to make clear is because people didn't understand, well, how can the judge give orders or how can the judge get involved if they don't have jurisdiction? It's like, they might, have, they might not have jurisdiction over the case. They might not have jurisdiction over Katie Joy, but they for damn sure have jurisdiction over Brown and Saltz. No problem. You know, so that's that, that's the answer to that question. Um, as for when we're going to get a issue, I, a determination on jurisdiction with respect to the case, with respect to Katie Joy, I don't know. The way the court wrote it, the way the court summarized their oral part of their argument or the oral part of the decision suggested 
that they the, the, the court said a line, I'm going to paraphrase it slightly, where the court said, why don't we just deal with the personal jurisdiction issue when we'll deal with the rest later? Which is exactly what you expect, because that's the most critical issue right now is the personal jurisdiction issue. So, of course, we should deal with the personal jurisdiction issue, because why deal with anything else other than whacking the attorneys around? Because I can. Why deal with anything else in the case until I determine whether or not personal jurisdiction? So, like, all these many, many filings, I like, I, it, the judge doesn't seem to care, nor should the judge care, because they have very little to do with anything. Let's, the judge is just basically saying, let me go figure out the jurisdiction issue, and, and then we can deal with whatever remains, if there's anything that does remain after that, right? So when will the judge deal with the jurisdiction issue? I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like the judge has been sufficiently irked, though, that you might anticipate a ruling sooner rather than later. You know, with the amount of filings and stuff on this case, I would not be surprised if there's a decision from the judge sooner rather than later. But that's just a just an informed guess. So it might be it might be next week. It might be a month from now. I don't know. It might be three months from now. Uh, the judge is the judge is going to judge. What do you want from me? I don't know. You can just you can just take this as perhaps an indication. The judge might be interested in getting to it sooner rather than later. But if it's six months from now, it's six months from now. What do you want? I, I can't do anything. What do you want from me, right? I'm just here to tell you, to tell you. So that's what's going on. So let's deal with all of that. So I will take some questions now, and I'm just going to start from wherever we are. Um, so Eva asks me, if Saltz gets himself in trouble again, do you think the judge will revoke Pro Hoc Vici or find him in contempt? No, probably no. That doesn't seem like the judge. No, we're. I think we're a lot of steps from either contempt or revoking pre pro hoc vice. Revoking pre hoc pro hoc vice is a pretty notable sanction. Contempt is also a pretty notable sanction, to be quite honest. Although some judges are a little bit more free about it. But yeah, I think the most likely thing that would happen if Salt does more is a more sternly worded order from the court, a more sternly worded admonition, and maybe some more clear direction because you didn't get the memo the first time. Uh, but I, I don't think uh, revoking Pro Hoc Vice is really in the cards at this point. And I don't, a, a contempt is slightly more likely, but uh, I don't think we're in an attempt. I guess, I mean, Saltz would have to do a lot to be in contempt. Contempt is requires a lot. We're not there. So a, a more strongly worded admonition, uh, maybe with more specific direction, would be the most likely thing that would happen next, in my view. Do I think Saltz would be a lot more chill if Katie stopped talking about the case? Probably. Um, someone asked if I checked my mail. I have not checked my mail yet. I only check it once a week, but I have seen that I got the mail. So I'm, I'll pick it up later this week. Uh, if KJ runs out of money, will Brown have to stay on the case? Brown would have to ask permission to withdraw if uh, Katie runs out of money. Um, so he'd have to ask for permission. So once you're in it, you don't, you just can't quit. You have to ask the court nicely. And so the judge might say, no, that's always, that's always a possibility. The judge might always say, you have to say, can I withdraw because my client won't pay me? And the, the court can say, no, you're like, cool. So I'll just be doing this for free now. And then, yeah, I mean, you signed up for it. So you're in it now, like super. So, yeah. Uh, question from Betty Boop. Is the judge mentioning Is the judge mentioning the the model the rules a low key shade salts? Yeah, it's definitely things of salt. What happens if Katie stops starts yapping again? Nothing at this point. The judge's admonitions at this point are directed to the lawyers, not to the clients. Is a response needed from the plaintiffs on the motion? No. At this point they that no. To the motion, no. The motion was they, the motion responses came in like twenty documents ago. We had we had responses like twenty documents ago, twenty five documents ago. There, there doesn't need to be anything more from this at this point. It just we could just deal with it on there. Yeah, Rita Joe's right. You really have to tick off the judge to get sanctioned. We're not there yet. Uh, hot bindy says, so, so salts cannot use social media for witnesses. No, that's not what that means. Salts can use it to find witnesses. He just has to be careful not to make aspersions against Brown or, uh, Katie. So one of the, one of the, one of the tweets that, for example, would be problematic 
and would not be the kind of thing that Saltz would be able to do in the future was the one where he provided the screenshot of that hacking attempt that said that the without a crystal ball email address had been attempted to been added to a recovery email for him, right? So he took that screenshot and he said um, in the tweet that, you know, he got this message from a familiar email account. Uh, you guys know the message I'm talking about, right? And so Brown argued, and the judge seemed to buy it more than I did, that by Salt doing that, he was he was insinuating or implicating Katie in hacking. And the judge seemed particularly displeased by that kind of thing. So Saltz can continue using social media to define witnesses. He just has to be careful that when he's doing it, he's not making any sorts of implications against Brown or Saltz on social media that they are doing bad things. That's the way I read it all. Uh, Rude Canadian says, thank you for the answer. No problem, I try. Uh, I've been wondering the whole time because I'm guessing she'll run on cash before discovering. I'm not sure how she's paying for this so far. I'm a pretty big deal says, what can happen legally or criminally to people behind the sack accounts threatening people and pack people hacking? I mean, it, it again, it depends on a whole bunch of things. But, you know, when you're thinking hacking, you're thinking Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. There's some really serious charges there that could theoretically apply in the criminal cases. When you're making threats against people, I mean, those the, there's some charges there. So what could happen? I mean, you're talking the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act is kind of really a bitch, to be honest. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, there's some really serious sanctions for hacking. Um, so, I mean, theoretically, the U.S. attorney could go after a lot of these people if they really wanted to. question where would accusations of ethical misconduct ever be addressed before the court the court would be the first person to address them because the court has control over the attorneys and then you know and and then if needed then you could reference it to the bar but the first place would be the court logically what's next with the case the most logical thing to happen next with the case is a decision on jurisdiction i mean that's been the most logical thing to happen for quite a while now because all this stuff that's been happening is completely illogical. It doesn't flow. It, it doesn't flow logically from what happened before. All these precipices and all these motions and all these declarations have been illogical because they didn't flow from the premises, right? So it, in, a fairly, in a fairly literal sense, we've been doing illogical things for quite a while now because a lot of what we've been doing has not flown from the premises that we were based on. Uh, we, we had the, the premises that we were based on, we dealt with like 20, 20 papers ago, uh, for 20 papers now or something, we've been doing illogical things. So what well, the most logical thing to happen now is the same thing that's been the most logical thing to happen for the last 20 filings, a decision on the motion for jurisdiction. That thing is actually a little bit more likely to happen at this point because the court seems to want to knock it off. But from a strictly like a strict sense of what flows next. A decision on jurisdiction would be the thing that would flow next. And that's been true for a while, unfortunately. If the personal jurisdiction issue gets dragged out six months, does that create a greater risk of KJ running out of money? No. As long as there's no new, as long as there's no new filings, there would be no new costs. So as long as the attorneys aren't doing anything and, you know, they shouldn't be if everyone keeps their mouth shut. So if it's six months from now, if the attorneys don't do anything, it doesn't cost Katie any money. So um, someone said, uh, Sean Lay said, did you see KJ showed emails by mistake? No, I didn't see it, but I've heard it. Does that waive attorney client privilege? At least as to those emails, yes. And then I have receipts for her getting Washington records? No, I did not beyond what's been filed in the court case. No. If the judge rules in favor, because I don't watch these people on social media, right? I keep myself confined to this, the court case as much as I can. If the judge rules in favor of the jurisdiction. Can she ask the attorneys to resubmit or withdraw their documents? They're mostly nothing. She could do that. And she could also just ignore them to be quite honest, if she wants to. How come KJ and Brown get away with stuff but Saltz can't do anything with social media? I told you, because Rule point three, rule 3.6 of the ethics rules only applies to extrajudicial, extrajudicial conduct. The reason that KJ and Brown can get away with stuff is, well, 
the rule that KJ, the reason KJ can get away with stuff is that she's not bound by the ethics rules because she's not an attorney. The reason that Brown can get away with what he's doing is because he's not doing things on social media. He's not doing things extrajudicially. The reason that Saltz is getting burned is because he is doing things extrajudicially. He's doing things on social media, and that's a violation or at least testing the limits. Let me put it that way. It's testing the limits of Rule 3.6. I don't think it's a violation. I think it's less a violation than the judge does. But the judge thinks it's testing the limits, so let's go with that. But that's exactly why. Katie isn't bound by the rules of ethics. Brown hasn't violated the rules of ethics. That would be why. What type of light am I using to illuminate my face? I am using just a simple torchette lamp that is po that is pointed up at the ceiling and just having reflected light off the ceiling. Uh, my color balance appears to be a tad on the warm side. I do like it a little bit more on the warm side, so that's fine by me. Um, with the hackers overseas? Well, I mean, if the hacking occurred in the United States, they'd still be in violation of U.S. law. So, I mean, again, hypothetically speaking, if the hacking occurred in the United States, they'd still be in violation of the U.S. law no matter where it occurred. So, you know, there's that. Now, how you actually get to those people is a problem, but, you know, there's that. When's the next court date? There's no scheduled court date next. What kind of documents will we file next? There's no expectation at this point that there will be any further filed documents in this case. Uh, there's been no expectation there be any filed documents in this case for quite a while. Um, we had all the documents that we needed quite a while ago. So the expectation is the same as it's been for quite a while. There will be no further documents filed in this case, and the next thing will be from the court. Will that be what happens? Probably not, because that's not in line with our experience. What do I think the judge will rule on jurisdiction? Sooner rather than later is my working bet. Why are they fighting so hard to be in Washington? I don't know. The point, the point of the personal jurisdiction at this point doesn't make any sense. I'm not sure it ever made sense, but why are they fighting this hard? I'm not 100% sure. How long do I think the jurisdiction will be? Eh, sooner rather than later. Did I see Super Chats? No, I kind of was uh, trying to deal with this stuff as soon as I can. So let me do Super Chats. Lori Smith gave me 1999, saying, thank you so much for breaking these documents down. I appreciate your hard work. You're fine. Uh, Channel Manager gave me 999. So the D size, the D sizing contest is finally over. One can only hope, ma'am. And Virilian gave me Australian $5. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, me saying it looks like a duck isn't me saying it is a duck. Yeah, that's fair enough. Saying it looks like a duck isn't the same thing as saying it is a duck. That's true. Saying it sounds like a duck isn't the same thing as saying it is a duck. That's also true. Things can look like ducks and sound like ducks that aren't ducks. That's true. So, fair. Kelly said, pending the jurisdiction, can a judge order the attorneys to refile documents? I guess they could, but the judge is just more likely to just ignore it. Because why does the judge want any more filings? At this point, it's just easier for the judge to ignore it. How much is the case costing KJ? I mean, I think at this point, I mean, I don't know their billing arrangement, but this has been going on so much. And there's so many things there in this case that I think Katie is somewhere in the $50,000 range, you know, plus or minus. So I, it's a lot. Question with the hackers not in the U.S. I answered that question. Will the ruling on jurisdiction happen via court papers being dropped in the case? Will it actually be a trial? Well, jurisdiction would happen without a trial. Um, so the ruling on jurisdiction will happen. Yeah, the ruling on jurisdiction can happen and must happen well before a trial. We're nowhere close to a trial. So a ruling on jurisdiction will happen on the papers that are there. What happens if Katie keeps talking about the case? I mean, it keep, continues weakening her, weakening her case. So it will hurt her in the end. Uh, Joey says her estimated monthly income is between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars per month. Really? Good for her. Good for her if that's her income, you know. But still, like fifty thousand dollars is a huge chunk of change, especially when you factor in taxes. You know. But fair enough.
So if KJ runs out of cash, how's Tati gonna get a settlement? Yeah, you can't get you can't bl get blood from a stone. If there's no money to be get, then you, that's what you call judgment proof, right? So then all you can really get as a practical matter is an injunction, and you can get a garnishment of any future wages, but you know you can't get money that doesn't exist. So I'm not sure what the goal is really there. Could it be no win, no fee? Not for Katie, because Katie, Katie, no, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for, uh, it doesn't make sense for Katie's side to be based on contingency because there's nothing for it to be contingent on. Was the benefit of it case being in Washington at this point? At this point, I don't know what the case benefit to it being in Washington. The, the reason to, the reason typically that you'd care is because of convenience of geography. But because everything's happening virtually these days and, uh, you know, on Zooms and th everything, geography is much less relevant. So at this point, I'm not really sure what the point of fighting the jurisdiction in Washington is. So I don't really know. Uh, question. Do you think Salt's putting a photo of him watching Emily's video on Twitter was a bad idea? Maybe that's why people think she's on her side. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think there was anything wrong with that personally. Who decides the date for jurisdiction? The judge does. The judge controls the case, man. Scump says, gotta say looking good. Thank you. Cynthia says, but if it's federal, wouldn't that be jurisdiction? The, 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 the federal court has subject matter jurisdiction, but the question is that whether or not this particular federal court has personal jurisdiction. The federal court in uh, Minnesota has personal jurisdiction. The question is whether or not the federal court in Washington has personal jurisdiction. And that's, still being decided so federal courts have subject matter jurisdiction but whether or not this particular federal court has personal jurisdiction is still to be decided we're on the street is toddy wants kj's channel she could get that as damages i suppose who does one turn to to expose criminal actions uh i don't know that's beyond my capacity to answer uh you want you probably should talk to a uh, private attorney and get some advice on that one. That's beyond my scope to build the answer. When will they receive 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 re release results from the hacking? I don't know. So basically, everything should calm down and slow down now until jurisdiction is decided. Probably. Does the judge have an obligation to read any of the filings eventually or no? The judge doesn't have an obligation to read the filings because the judge gets to determine what is and is not relevant. And if they're not relevant, the judge gets to ignore them because they're not relevant. You know, so the judge can, the, and their clerk will probably read things to get an opinion. But the court says, yeah, these 300 pages I don't care about. I'm not going to look at them. And, you know, then you'd be going some to some sort of abuse of discretion analysis. And good luck with that. So the judge has wide discretion. You know, if the judge says, I'm not going to look at these documents because they don't matter. So thanks for following them and all, but I just don't care. As long as the, as long as they're not abusing discretion, it takes quite a lot to trigger that threshold. Then the judge can just ignore stuff because, you know, you know how they say, tell it to the judge. There's a reason they say, tell it to the judge. And the judge can be like, eh, eh. She's been a judge for 40 years. She's going to get a lot of slack. You know what I'm saying? In the transcript from the hearing, a judge says there are people in this court has authority over. That's attorneys and plaintiff and defendant. Well, the attorneys for sure. And yeah, and they could issue gag orders and stuff because it's the, the court also has jurisdiction over itself. And I know that sounds weird that the, to say that ju the court has jurisdiction over itself, but the court always has jurisdiction to control its own proceedings. And so the, the court has jurisdiction over the the plaintiff and defendant in so much as they can control the what happens before the court so they have jurisdiction over themselves and can regulate themselves if that makes any sense so that's how i interpret that comment
Did the judge say there was enough to go to trial? No, the judge didn't say that. The judge said we. The judge made a made a very snarky comment about ability to go to trial, but it was it was in the context of smacking the attorneys around. The judge was not saying there was enough for a trial. The judge was just making a smackdown of the attorneys. Is it legal jurist is it legally jurisdictional if a sheriff's deputy reports a complaint for assault to another sheriff's deputy with the exchange not being recorded? I don't know. What sheriff's department where? What are the relevant laws? I don't know. When you ask something like that, you're asking very specific questions. And that also sounds suspiciously like it's a personal legal question, and I, I can't get involved in personal legal questions. You know, I give generalized legal advice. If you're asking personal legal questions, you need to speak to a personal lawyer. I can give general advanced advice, but I can't. I don't know the law everywhere, man, you know? Do they meet with the judge for the ruling, or is it just filed with court? It'd just be filed. Does jurisdiction does a judge have jurisdiction to write a long opinion when jurisdiction is decided? Do they have to write a long opinion? Not particularly. The the opinion needs to be as long as it needs to be. I mean, that sounds stupid, but I've seen judges get stuff done in like five pages. I've seen judges write 30 pages. So it depends. The judge doesn't particularly have to write very much. So they don't have to write a long opinion. They have to provide some basic legal rationale. So you'd expect like at least a couple pages, but they get done in five pages. That's possible. Something like 20 pages is more realistic, but you know, it, it, it needs to be as long as it needs to be. Any best as to how long until we reach a final verdict on the entire case? <sighs> Two years plus from now. Are there taxes on lawyers' fees? Are there taxes on lawyer fees? No. Oh, like sales tax? No, I don't think so. No. Do they have to have a trial to determine jurisdiction? No. Jurisdiction is a pure question of law. the The reason you have a tr the reason you have a trial is that if you need to determine facts, right? The reason you have a jury is to determine facts. It's questions of jurisdiction is a pure question of law. There will not be a trial to determine jurisdiction. The judge will just write an opinion. Here is the rule. Here is the answer. There is not going to be a trial to determine jurisdiction. There is nothing to have a trial for. It's a pure question of law. There's no, there's nothing for, there would be nothing for a jury to do. If Katie has no money by the end, could her husband be held liable for payments to Toddy? No, because he's not being sued. Question, could there be any motion for dismissal on jurisdiction and defamation at the same time in the beginning? Oh yeah, no, they could have absolutely moved to dismiss jurisdiction and defamation, and the fact they didn't is why I beat my head against the wall. If the case is in Washington, does that mean the discovery trial will be done over Zoom? Um, discovery would, pr well, discovery pr might be on Zoom, but even if you had to fly out to Washington and get a hotel room, it'd still be way cheaper than this. So, you know. Uh, Kelly says, thank you for the answers. I feel like this judge feels confident when my making both sides squirm. Could be very well, yeah. She wants the case in Minnesota because he'll help her much less pricier than a Washington lawyer. Man, eh, that could be. Judge sure sound inclined to rule jurisdictions in Washington. I didn't particularly read it that way, but fair enough. If Toddy loses this case, Jay get awarded in anything? No. At this point in time, we're waiting for a judge to make a verdict on juris judgment on jurisdiction dismissal filing. Washington is where Toddy is. Could Toddy, business partner, be paying KJ's fees? Sure. Anyone could be paying KJ's fees. Um, anyone's allowed to bankroll someone else's fees. Um, so, yeah. Do I think Zoom courtrooms will be more common after the pandemic? I'd bet against, but who knows. Question. Is this Lifetime being movie played out? Which actor would you like to play you? I don't know. I'm pretty funny. I could play myself. I got some skills.
Kimberly says, what's next for you on civil law? I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing on this channel. And I'm very happy with the growth and just try to get more growth. Do they meet with the judge to get the ruling? No, it would just be filed. It would just be filed and put on the record. And we'd get it the same, the same time they did. It would just be put on Pacer and we get the same time they would. This is the same judge on that Pacer case. It was the same judge on the Parler case, if that's what you mean. But that case is over. Could KJ's husband be held liable for payments? No. Why don't you like to talk about patent law? I find it fascinating because I'm tired. I've been doing it 13 years and I'm tired. I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, Enchanted Light says, considering how bad KJ's original motion to dismiss was, it better for Toddy having some washing since having to refile Minnesota would basically be a do-over. Eh. I mean, they can and we'll do, deal with it in the answer, but I don't. I don't know how much difference it makes. I mean, it would just mean that we put a big pile of, it would mean that all the money we've spent, which is a hundred thousand dollars plus between the two sides, we'd just be lighting on fire. So there's that, but I mean, we'd be lighting on fire either way, to be quite honest. So whether it's in Washington or not, we basically lit a hundred thousand dollars plus on fire. So I'm not sure what the point of it all was. Where will we hit the tier about the Toddy Halo Swanson case? I don't know. Who has jurisdiction in the meantime? What do you mean? Who has jurisdiction in the meantime? I don't understand the question. Thank you. Happy Thursday. I suppose the court in Washington has jurisdiction in the meantime. Can we get a Halo Beauty ad? I don't know, man. Parlor CEO got canned. I saw that. Is KJ's... A, is KJ, is liability insurance be paying attorney's fees? I don't know. Is decision of jurisdiction entirely up to the judge? Yes. With his potential to deny jurisdiction, but judge took an interest and wanted to preside. The judge would have to make a legally correct decision, so either side could appeal if that's the question there. But it's just a pure question of law. Are you still practicing or have I retired? I'm still practicing. Will the FBI come knocking on KJ's door? Probably not. In your opinion, is James Westbrook a public figure? I don't know. Uh, Nate, Nate and I were having this discussion yesterday. Nate was very bullish on the concept that James is a public figure. I haven't looked into it enough or thought about it enough to reach, it, uh, reach an opinion. But, uh, you know, Nate thinks the answer is very strongly yes. I'm not convinced, though. But it's a it's a reasonable argument. It would be a reasonable position to argue. I'm just not convinced the answer is yes. What's my favorite lawyer movie? Probably uh, Rainmaker. If Katie won the lawsuit, can she sue Toddy for legal fees? No. You seem to be da sad or down tonight. No, I'm fine. Thank you for asking, though. What happens to people if it's proved they lie in their declarations? I mean, theoretically, perjury charges. Keep noticing frames dropping on your stream every now and then? Couldn't speak to that. Could there be a YouTube class action if Toddy wins jurisdiction? I don't even understand that question. A class action over what? Against who? What am I drinking? Nothing at the moment. I'm just having a conversation with you guys. Yeah, so do a little Halo Beauty ad, I guess. You look nice and black. Thank you very much. I don't know. Maybe I'm not in the Halo Beauty mood kind of tonight. I'm just seeing if there's any more questions before I sign off, because there's a thousand of you here, and I'm just seeing if there's more questions before I sign off. Make a drink. Mm. Could YouTube content creators get together to fight, get to fight out 
of state jurisdiction. Uh, no. Favorite beer? Uh, these days I prefer a, uh, a more session IPA. So something that's a little bit lower in uh, IBUs, so my flavor profile doesn't get completely bur burned out. What physical characteristics do you look for in a partner? I I prefer to I prefer to deal with that on a one on one level, to be honest, rather than making announcements regarding that. Would judge have ruled uh may rules on jurisdiction already? I think any relationship has to be one on one, and physical characteristics are just part of it, to be honest. So. Hello from New Zealand. Hello, New Zealand. What would be consequences for perjury if Katie's found guilty? Um, I'd have to look up the relevant sanctions in the law, but I mean, you could be talking prison time. If KJ is arrested by the FBI, would she have to get another lawyer? Um, maybe. Uh, she might need a criminal lawyer, but I I don't see that happening in the in the near future. He must be getting a successful YouTuber because they're stacking the advertisements. That's nice. It's a weird floating head visual. I don't know how to interpret that. Russian bot. Um, as opposed to what? Have I looked in the cage with H three H three? Yeah, I've looked in that lawsuit a lot. It was a really good one. I kind of wish I had covered it more at the time. It was a good, it was a good case. The H3, H3 case and the Sargon case were two I kind of missed. Your light seems dim tonight. I think covering tea is killing your spirit because you seem to despise it. No, that's not fair. Has KJ contacted you about my coverage? No. How old am I? I turned 40 in January. You and Emily have commented how tiny this case is in the grand scheme. Yes, it is. Do I think YouTube cares or is invested? No. I, I, I'm, pre I'm pretty damn confident YouTube does not know this thing exists. Can I do a recap of what? We were discussing the, um, the order from the court. The order from the court is basically telling the attorneys to knock it off when it comes to social media statements that are making accusations or insinuations against either the parties or against the other attorneys. So that's the short recap. Because could you define class action? A class action is where a whole bunch of people join together to fight a common cause, usually for some kind of tort. So they're joining together to file a lawsuit. You look nice. The lighting's perfect. I think it looks great. Thanks. Could I do a breakdown of the H three H three case? So that was H um, three H three versus. Um, what was his name? Uh, Haas or Hoff or something like that. So H3H3 re did a reaction video to this guy who did a video of him chasing a woman in a parkour style. And they used about a third of the video or something as part of their comment and critique. And then they did a longer video commenting and critiquing on it. So they used about a third of the original as memory serves as part of the comment and critique. Um, Haas or Hoff or whatever his name was sued H3H3 for copyright infringement. The court ruled that uh, it was fair use because the amount of the work taken was not excessive and it was transformed by the critique and commentary of the uh, H3H3 and uh, therefore did not comprise copyright infringement, did comprise a fair use determination. The court also had a nice little footnote in there um, about the court saying that reaction videos come in a, a couple different varieties. There are some where people are just watching them more akin to a, a, joint, watch, a joint watching session, like people just watching and just kind of chuckling or laughing like they're watching a movie, but otherwise not really interacting. And there are reaction videos that are more extensive and um, and more of a comment and critique and criticism. And so the court had a, a footnote basically saying that the court is not ruling that all reaction videos are fair use, which is completely right. Um, you, you need to actually 
have the comment and critique. But yeah, that was the H3, H3 case against Haas or Hoff when he sued them for copyright infringement. I still don't know why they fired their original lawyer. They said that they, they, uh, they, said that they were going to tell why they fired their original lawyer when the case ended, but they never did describe why they fired their original lawyer. So I was always kind of curious about that because they never clarified why they fired their original lawyer. And if you're wondering why I'm closing my eyes, it's because I'm having to access my memory and I don't want to be distracted. Um, but that's what happened in the case. It was Matt Haas. Yeah, I, I, I was close. There were two separate chats. Well, I think about Brown's emails being hacked and what do you think of his responses or lack thereof? I mean, I think they've been fine, all things considered. Jenny wished me happy birthday. Thank you. For the H3H3 H3 case, they said it cost over 100000 Is that what you expected? That sounds about right. How's a court able to make an order over a case that's not determined jurisdiction? I, I mentioned this earlier, Cynthia. They have jurisdiction over the attorneys. That's why. And they have jurisdiction over themselves. Am I going to cover Crowder versus Facebook? Yes, I will. Have I looked into Daybell versus Vallow? Not familiar with that case. Yeah, please do the YouTube things of liking, hitting the bell, subscribing, all that stuff. Thank you. Don't fall asleep. No, I was just thinking. I was just thinking. And I, I didn't want I didn't want to distract myself while I was thinking by reading the chat. So I just want to close my eyes so I could think without being distracted. I don't always have to do that, but you know, there's so much visually going on. It was a little bit easier to close my eyes so I didn't have that additional distraction. Is there a standard for public figure? Yes. Is it a determination a judge makes? Yes. Yeah, there's a standard, but like all good things, it has to be judged whether or not it's met. In the in the short, public figures, whether or not you purposely availed yourself to of the public in order to get attention from the public at large. Uh, that's the short definition, but like most things, it's complicated. Yes, there's a standard. Yes, it's judged. What do you prefer, Brandon the handgun? Um, I I like locks, and I really like the Walther PP PPQ for its trigger. Do I have any pets? I don't have any pets. Hmm. Have I had any good stories from my time as a patent lawyer? Not really. They've been pretty banal. What's the weirdest case that I've been involved in? They're not. I don't really deal with a lot of weird things. They're pretty kind of ordinary and very just sort of methodical. It's it's difficult, but it's not exciting. It's my job is pedantic and exacting, but not exciting. It requires a lot of precision and a lot of detail, but it's not sexy. Um, so when you ask, like, what's the most interesting case? I mean, like, there's challenging cases, but not particularly interesting ones. There's also the reason I'm kind of bored. And also, I don't particularly deal with weird. The stuff I deal with is not weird. How long is discovery? In this case, it's going to go on forever. Because, yeah, the discovery, if they get to discovery, that's going to rack up legal fees for sure. Yeah. Ruger, Ruger is very good. And Kimber, Kimber Lee? You mean Kimber. I'm not familiar with Kimber Lee. Do you mean Kimber? If you mean Kimber, it's very good for a 1911 style. I think Kimber makes the best 1911. If you mean Kimberly, I've never heard of it. Ruger is very good. Uh, they're 1022. I mean, it's the if you want like the best gun, especially if you want to teach a young kid, you can't do any better than the Ruger 1022. Uh, the Ruger um, um, LC9, uh, the LC9S is also an extremely good concealed carry gun. Uh, if you're looking for concealed carry, that Ruger LC9S is really, really good. Um, also the revolvers are really, really good. So if you're looking for a revolver, Ruger makes really good revolvers. So, yeah. So that's why I get a Ruger for the revolvers for the 1022 or for the, uh, LC9S, which I think is an outstanding choice for a concealed carry firearm. The Smith and Wesson's a good choice. Is Carolina beach music still a thing? And can you pretzel? I never learned how to pretzel, but I did the, how I did learn how to do the shag. 
Glock 26? Yeah, that's a good choice. That's a, that's my daily carry too. Would I quit for full-time YouTube? Yeah. Beretta? I'm not a huge Beretta fan. Uh, unless you're talking about shotguns. Uh, for pistols? No, but their shotguns are great. Um, Beretta is one of the oldest firearm companies in the world. And they might be the oldest, I forget. But their their shotguns are very good. Beretta shotguns. Not a huge fan of their pistols. Um, I mean, they're fine. They just, uh, they're a fine choice. It's just not my cup of tea. So I don't begrudge anyone who likes them. Um, but their, their, rifle, their, their shotguns are very, very great. What would I predict to happen during Discovery? Oh, man, I can tell you what's going to happen in Discovery. What they're going to have, I, the Discovery is going to, it's the Discovery, Discovery is going to cost a goddamn fortune. Discovery is going to cost a fucking fortune in this case. Oh, my God. How much is Discovery going to cost? Because what, it's going to cost a lot because of, of Katie's deposition. The Katie's deposition is going to cost a fortune. Here's what has to happen in order for Katie's deposition to have happen, okay? Assuming they haven't done so already, and personally, I don't really think they have, they're going to have to watch all the videos. Now, I don't think I don't think it's particularly likely that Brown's watched any of the videos. And if, if Saltz has watched the videos, I don't think it's particularly likely he's watched them all or in great detail. That's a personal guess, but what do I know for sure? But if I had to guess, I don't think either side's really viewed the videos in any detail. In order to do that deposition, however, both sides are going to have to watch the videos completely. They're going to have to get a transcript of all the videos certified. Okay. That's going to be expensive as hell. They're going to have to watch all the videos. They're going to have to read all the transcripts. Then both sides are going to have to go through the transcripts with a highlighter. All right. So you're talking about you're talking about 40 plus videos, I think, that are involved in this thing. So you're going to have to watch 40 plus videos, probably more than once. You're going to have to get a transcript of them. You're going to have to, both sides are going to have to go through with a highlighter and try to highlight the things they think, they're going to both have to highlight the things they want to ask about and what they think the other side's going to ask about, right? So they have to go through and read them in detail to see what they want to ask about, and also what they think the other side's going to ask about. They have to write out their own questions, and they have to write out the other side's questions, because they have to anticipate what the other side's going to ask, so they can do witness prep. Fun. So that means Brown has to write out, Brown has to, Salt has to write out all the questions he's going to ask. Brown has to write out all the questions he thinks Salt will ask, and that's going to take a lot of time. So he has to, he has to write out all the questions Saltz will ask, he thinks at least, then he's going to have to sit Katie down and they're going to have to watch the videos together in detail. And he's going to have to go over the, he's going to have to go over all the questions he thinks Saltz is going to ask as best as he's able to predict. And they're going to have to go over their answers and Katie's answers. And they're going to have to figure out how to phrase those answers in the best possible light. All right. And they're going to have to do it more than once to make sure that Katie's fully prepped. All right. Are you are you getting a sense of what's going on at this point? So they have to go through it. They have to watch it. They have to go through the questions probably more than once to make sure that Katie's as well prepared as she can be. Right. And then you actually get to the moment of truth when they actually sit down. Salt is going to have a TV in some conference room somewhere, and he's going to have the videotapes or DVDs or whatever that he's going to be working from. He's going to ask questions. He's going to play segments of the videos. He's going to ask questions for every single video, depending on how much detail he wants to go into on each of them. They probably won't watch the whole thing, but as much as he wants to watch in critical moments, Brown's probably going to object and want to see more. They're going to have to watch more of the tape. They're going to ask questions. Brown's going to have to advise his client. Katie's going to have to answer. Are you getting an idea of what we're talking about? So you're talking about, and also each side doesn't just have one lawyer. Each side has multiple lawyers and paralegals. So you're talking about multiple lawyers for each side, having to watch every video at least once, having to get a, having to get a certified transcript in order to ask questions from, going through the documents, going through the entire transcript at least once and probably more than once, 
highlighting key sections they want to ask about or they think the other side will ask about, writing out their own questions or writing out the questions they think the other side will ask. If you're Kate, if you're Brown, sitting Katie down and watching the videos with the questions that you think that they're going to ask and prepping her and getting her answer and be like, okay, instead of answering the question this way, how about answering the question this way? And you're going to have to do that for every single question you think they're going to answer. Then you're going to have to go through it again and get different questions and make sure that she has the right answers. And you're going to have to do it again and again and again and again and again to make sure that you've covered everything, to make sure that she's fully prepped over the answer, to make sure that she fully understands all the questions she's going to be asked. And then Katie's going to have to sit down in a room with Salt, and Salt is going to display the videos, which will be like the eighth or ninth time that Katie has seen them by the time we get to that point. And that Salt is going to have to ask questions that hopefully Brown has anticipated. Right? And if not, that means that they have to stop. Brown has to advise the client on the question that he didn't think of, give answers, and hope it all goes well. So that deposition is going to cost a fucking fortune. Hopefully that's sufficiently clear. Yeah, no, hopefully that's sufficient courtly clear. Yeah, 1022 is a fantastic for chain. Mini four, Ruger Mini 14 is a good choice. Uh, I do like pistol. I like pistol shooting and I like skeet uh, shooting. Um, I've done some trap. I don't find that interesting. The sporting clays is really, really hard. I need to get better at it. Wilson Combat. Yeah, Wilson Combat makes some great stuff. Yeah, that's, that's a nice choice. It's expensive, but yeah, no, that's good. LC9 is continued? Oh my god, really? I didn't know that. That's fucking bullshit. Your hubby bought an AK? That's funny. I just sold mine. Eighty nine plus videos? Yeah. Could they just focus on specific ones just because of prep for the other side? Yeah. Brown doesn't know what questions Saltz is going to ask. So he has to anticipate, which means he has to do them all. Multiple times. In detail. And review it multiple times with Katie. It's going to take forever. It's going to take forever. If Toddy wins defamation, what are the potential impacts for commentary channels? Uh, no particular impact on defamation. The more interesting is a, a jurisdiction. Depends on the nature of how it's uh, written. Luring seems like a pain in the ass. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. That is stupid in my opinion. They should have watched the videos at least to know what's going on with the case. You do I don't think you need to necessarily to at this stage of the proceedings. Um, Salts has seen some, if not most of it. Yeah. Brown's more like Katie without a clue. Probably. There's no particular reason to review him in detail at this point. So I'm, I'm not willing to bank that either. It's possible. It's possible that Salts and Brown have watched them in detail. But if I were a betting man, I'm less likely against. It's literally weeks of work. Yep, it sure is. How many times do we think Brown is going to ask the judge permission to leave the case as series of events come to pass? Can GoFundMe be set up to buy Brown bourbon? Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a nightmare. The lawyers watch or the paralegals? I mean, the lawyers are going to have to watch it at least once. I would think for sure the paralegals are going to have to watch. I mean, the paralegals will watch and probably do the questions a lot of them, but the lawyers are going to have to go through it at least once, at least. 
Discovery is brutal under the best of circumstances. Yeah, it can be brutal. Can KJ opt to settle at this point? I'm not sure Toddy's interested in that. Am I a traveling man? I like to travel. I haven't traveled lately, of course. Do I think subpoenas will go to Google and Twitter? Eventually, but not right now. Why is the judge taking so long on jurisdiction? Because I think there's been a lot of bullshit, basically. That's what I think. Yeah. I wonder why Ruger dropped the LC9S. It was a fantastic firearm. That sucks. How much is the cost? Lots. Lots. All right. I think I've, I've answered all the questions in chat, so that's enough for now. I hope I earned your like. I really do. I spent this time answering as many questions as I did I got to the end. I really hope I earned your like through all that. And if you'd be so kind as to give it a like, if I did, I'd really appreciate it. Um, it helps with the engagement and stuff. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get the channel to grow, and I really appreciate it. And for 99 cents a month, you too can become a member of the channel and help to support us financially. Hope all is well. Till later. Cheers and goodbye.